I'm not doing it. Hi everyone. That looks crooked. Is that you sure? You're fine. Hi everyone. I am here at the Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a good day. I sure would be to grouchy because you don't feel good today. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, let's see here. Today we're going to be reading uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27, reading through chapter 13, verse 13, Psalm 37, verses 1 through 11, and Proverbs chapter 21, verses 23 and 24. Did you see that one? Alright, so let me get down here. Okay, so in 1 Corinthians today, we'll be talking about love is indispensable. Amen. Because what does Jesus say is the most important thing? Love. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all have gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? Now eagerly desire the greater gifts. And yet, I will show you the most excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophecy in part. But when completeness comes, what is in part disappears. When I was a child, I talked like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put the ways of childhood behind me. For now we see only a reflection as in a mirror. When we shall see face to face, now I know in part then I shall know fully, even as I am fully known. And now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these 
is love. Amen. And that is where we are stopping with 1 Corinthians today. And Jesus has told that over and over again. The greatest thing is love. The most important thing is love. All right. So now let's begin our first psalm, first part of our psalm, which is Psalm 37. We'll start it today with verses 1 through 11. And it is a beautiful psalm of David. All right. David's kind of like helping, like telling others how, kind of telling others how to give honor, pray to the pray to the Lord. Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart. <coughs> Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in Him, and He will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for Him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways, when they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found. But the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. All right. And that is where we're stopping with Psalm 37 today. so true and I've been through that so many times people doing their evil schemes to you evil schemes evil schemes after you've done so good for them and then they go behind your back plotting evil against you to do horrible things to you after you've done so good to them oh yeah We've had that happen many times with close, close family. And you're just like, how is God letting this happen? You know, why is God letting this happen? Why do they keep getting everything? They get everything handed to them. They get everything they want. And they're evil. They're evil. They don't believe in God. All they do is do evil things. All they do is lie. You grow more in God than you learn. Let them keep setting back doing what they're going to do. You can't stop them. You try to help, but they won't listen to you no matter what. All these bad things happen, and then you think, oh, this is going to change them, right? They'll make it worse. And you're like, if this don't change them, what's going to change them? And another bad accident happens, and you think, well, they're definitely going to change now. They're definitely going to turn to God now. No, they don't. No, they don't. God is with you. Just have faith and keep going. That is the devil that's on their side. That's why they keep getting everything. That's how they get what they want. 
because they're on the devil's side. They get all these earthly things and get their way. They're on the devil's side. But their soul is going to hell. And the soul is the most important thing. But all they care about is these earthly things and all they care about is hurting people when really the only person they're really hurting is themselves. The only one they're really destroying is themselves. And they laugh and think it's funny because they're hurting you. They don't believe. They don't believe. They laugh and make fun of you because you believe in God. And have other family members laughing at you too and calling you crazy. They convince everybody to believe them. So many people fall for the lies. But they're on the devil's side. But one day, people like that will pay for their actions. God sees everything. Just remember that. God sees it all. The good and the bad. And I don't want anybody to get in trouble. Because the evil things that they've done and the evil things they do are still doing. I don't want them to go to hell. I want them to change their ways and ask for forgiveness change their ways and go to heaven. I don't want them to go to hell. But I don't think it's ever going to happen. If you would only know. If you only knew. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay, so ending today's Bible reading is Proverbs chapter 21, verses 23 and 24. Those who guard their mouths and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. Me. That's why I'm not saying anything else. The proud and arrogant person, Mocker is his name, behaves with insolent fury. All right. Okay, guys, that was our Bible reading for today. I hope it touched your hearts. I got our prayer requests out here again. Okay, please keep the following people in prayer. Sherm, he's in a lot of pain tonight. <clears throat> um, Cindy Welsh, Layla and her son Emil, Rhonda Karshner, Matthew Simpson, Abby Myers. Um, they're at their new house right now doing some things. Um, dad, their papa, my dad, actually just dropped the bed off for them so they just got their bed put up at their house and they're going to the store here in a little bit um, to look for some bedding and stuff for it, some new bedding. Um, let's see, Jimmy Myers, Dora Parker, Judy Thompson, still ain't heard from Judy or anything about her, Elizabeth Jeffries, Garnet Boyer and Jim Mitchell, and the missing man, Andre. Still haven't heard anything. If they found him or not, I don't know if they're going to update. A lot of times on these missing person pages on Facebook, they won't even post an update. So I don't know. But I'm going to try to see if there's an update on there again. Um, but Andre is his name. Um, he's from Philadelphia. He's a big man. He's an African-American man. 6'4", over 300 pounds. Um, he's got really short hair, if not bald or very shaven. Very, very shaven. Um, and he is in... Last place he was seen was in Ohio. But they don't know where in Ohio. But like I said, he lives in Philadelphia. So if you see him, contact the Philadelphia Police Department. And he was last seen draw, driving a 2011 white BMW, which would stick out very well around these parts if he's in this area, like where we live, because people just don't drive that kind of car around here, you know. Everybody's poor, like out around here. 
but I mean in other parts of Ohio, you know, people would have other more fancy cars and stuff, so I don't know, but um, please be on the lookout for him. Okay, so I hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.